guys. So I needed to uh, update my Snapchat really quick. Uh, hey, before I get started with my talk, I simply want to mention how uh, blessed I feel not only to be here, but to be surrounded by uh, so many brilliant individuals, not only with the speakers that I'm presented with, but also the people backstage. They're doing a tremendous job. You don't get to see the amount of love that they're sharing with each other. I'm curious, uh, how many people here use Snapchat? Raise your hand. Right, that's a lot of you. How many people here before today knew about the Arctodote or knew about me? Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> I'm sure I have asked that question. Uh, so my name is Jova, right? I am the founder and creator of the Arctodote. The Arctodote is basically the social media, uh, not only page, but community, one million strong on Facebook alone that has become this place where people get to share the most vulnerable parts of themselves through art. I mean, the antidote is really a connection between the word antidote and art. Artidote. Ta-da! Uh, thank you, thank you. It was nice meeting you. No, um, so, the antidote is a project that I started uh, in early 2014. And it started very simple and, and very weird. I simply started uh, posting messages on Facebook, and these messages would usually be accompanied with an image and a quote. Uh, this would be a classic example of an artidote post, right? You would have either a painting, either a photograph, or a um, sculpture, and then I would fuse it together with a quote made by, of course, two separate authors, right? And the fusion of these two um, ways of storytelling, visual and textual, made you feel something, opened up a space for you to feel something that normally you wouldn't feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I mean by that is that the conversations that I was most interested in having were not the usual conversations that you would have on first encounter with an individual, basically avoiding all of the small talk, right? I, I hate small talk. And, um, and I wanted to also hijack the social media landscape, which I don't know if you remember, but in early 2014, social media consisted of news, uh, fake news, apparently, uh, cat videos, food porn, uh, graduation pics, vacation pics, Basically, all of these congratulatory uh, moments that people wanted to obviously share with their friends, but it was really lacking the other side of life, which is the dark side, which is the heavy side, which is the painful side. There was no space for those type of communications. Um, I mean, let alone those spaces uh, in the physical world are very limited, and so online, it, there are very few. So I began by trying to hack these uh, feeds on social media with these posts. I mean, these posts used to talk about things that are very vulnerable and very honest, uh, and this is what they looked like. And I thought that I was just simply doing this creative exercise, right? Um, being an artist myself, I wanted to just fuse two artworks, call it collage, post it on Facebook, and let it go viral. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. Thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> and then you have like a little monkey. Uh, imagine looking like the way that you've been through or what you've been through. Jesus, um, but what I did not expect was the community that would form underneath um, these posts. And what I mean by underneath is the comments, right? I'm very proud to say that the Artidote is possibly one of the few places on the entire internet where you tend not to want to avoid the comment section, right? Uh, where usually you would find like sexist remarks, homophobic remarks, um, yeah, this is not it, and this is possibly what not only makes the Arthodote unique, but it's the thing that makes me uh, the most proud of. But to show you guys what I mean by ah, having this community online, because sometimes it's very difficult to explain what an online community really is, uh, let me show you guys what has been happening, specifically on the Snapchat channel of the Arthodote. Now, last August, not even a year ago, I simply asked my audience, my community online through Snapchat, this question. Oh, it's me. Uh, I need some slides. So the question was on Snapchat, uh, what time is it there and what are you thinking about? That was a very simple question. Uh, and I would never have expected that the answers would pretty much become the backbone 
of the Snapchat channel. And what I mean by that is that the thoughts that started to coming in were thoughts that were usually predicated around two very important values, values that are actually the backbone of my talk today, and that was empathy and self-awareness. It sounds confusing, but what I mean by that is, let me show you. Let me show you three examples of the thoughts that are starting to come in. Now, example number one is quite simple, right? It's 6.18 p.m., I'm chilling on the bed with my dogs, and I'm thinking about ice cream. <laughs> Because why not, right? Who doesn't like ice cream? Uh, the other type of posts were a little bit more personal, uh, and it went a little bit deeper. Thinking about how happy I feel when I listen to my heart, I think that we can all connect with at least that feeling of um, self-awareness when you follow your, your heart, what your heart says. But the third type of messages that I began to receive, and this is the thing that switched everything, was something like this. Thinking about the baby I lost four months ago. So, quite specifically, it was this message that created a vision for myself about what this Snapchat channel was going to become. And that vision was that I was in front of the possibility of creating a global support group. Because, let me explain. So, the reason why I enjoy Snapchat so much as a platform for storytelling has to do with this in particular, with the possibility of sharing not only a picture of your surroundings, of your perspective, but also putting text on top. So you have the possibility of seeing not only the perspective of an individual, quite literal and figuratively, and also with their thoughts. And sometimes it's a lonely room, sometimes it's a landscape, and other times it's people confronting themselves. So this is where the empathy happens, right? Because you're not only being asked to be self-aware and to express your own thoughts, but you're also exposed to the thoughts of others um, and you're feeling together with people, right? Now, I wasn't expecting to receive a message like this one. This happened two weeks after I asked that question. I stopped taking my meds so that I could stock up and overdose. Tomorrow is the day. Cochabamba, Bolivia. 3.27 a.m. What, what do you do when you get a message like that, an immediate red flag? Um, I thought that the most that I could do was to at least screenshot this story and share it with my community, to at least let this person know that she wasn't alone and that we were listening, right? And I did not anticipate what would happen afterwards because instead of sending in their thoughts, their own thoughts, people began to send in the thoughts about this girl, this stranger on the other side of the world that was going through a really rough time, and these messages were messages of support, messages of love, messages that were trying to get her to at least expand her awareness and to make her uh, aware that she did not need to make a permanent decision on a temporary problem, and so, Somehow, I lost track of the username uh, of this girl in Bolivia, and I couldn't connect with her directly. So what I did was, I sent a message, a personal direct message into the feed, asking her not only had, if she'd seen the messages of support that she was getting, but also asking her if she was still there, right? And I waited for a response, I waited some more, and then finally, her response came in, uh, within 24 hours, actually. I ended up getting drunk, and a friend took me to her place, so I wouldn't be able to go, with, to go through with it. Overwhelmed, thank you, was her message. So at first I thought that this was a fluke. At first I thought that in no way was this Snapchat community responsible for pretty much saving the life of someone that was a complete stranger to everybody in the community. But then four months later, uh, this happened. Um, well, I'm going to go back to that slide, but I want to talk about the story that came in four months later. And it was a girl from Delhi. And the snap thought reads, I'm only 20, and the boy who knocked me up isn't even my boyfriend. I'm so scared, I think I'll OD tonight, so I don't bring shame to my family. Delhi, India, 11.41 AM. So, in order to understand this snap, I think that we have to be aware of the social uh, and cultural reality of India, right? Where bringing shame to your family is pretty much the worst thing that you can do. I mean, in India, family honor is everything. And to bring shame to it would either mean um, they can disown you or they can, you'll, be, you'll be strange from your family. 
And so this was a very tough uh, situation to be in for a 20-year-old woman who simply got engaged in um, a casual sexual experience, and all of a sudden, uh, when the condom broke, which I later found out that this was the case, uh, she got pregnant, a complete accident, um, a very tough uh, situation to be in. Now, having learned from the past experience with a girl from Cochabamba, I now did not wait. Now I messaged this girl right away, and I asked her one simple thing. I asked her to simply breathe, right? Which is sometimes the most courageous thing that you can actually do. And I asked her to breathe, to give herself 24 hours, and I told her that I would be sharing her story with the community, and I just told her to wait. Um, what did I, I did not tell her was that I had no idea what to do. I felt helpless. Um, I did not know if there was going to be actually a way out. I did not see a way out for her. I did not see myself helping her in any way. Uh, I was simply hoping that somebody had been in that similar situation from India and could send in a, a snap of support. And uh, to my surprise and to everybody else's surprise, the Snapchat community came through because everybody started sending in messages of support. Once again, the same story, um, and especially messages of people that have been in that situation in the past, of people that not only empathized, but people that offered uh, other possibilities and other types of support. And later, talking with a girl from Delhi, she told me that there was one particular snap that changed her entire um, choice pattern, right? And that snap was this. Somebody in Karachi, Pakistan, was praying at midnight for the girl in Delhi, asking her to simply wait and to be strong enough, that there would be other tons of options that she could do, but this did not need to be the end. And the girl from Delhi told me that this was actually the thing that made her change her mind. So the unexpected happened. Uh, we got an update from the girl from Delhi who told us that she received enough support from the community enough support to pierce through the fear and confront her mother about the situation and try to talk it out and at least to hope for the best. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that we were actually changing somebody's patterns of behavior, right? And then this update uh, came in two days later. And this was, once again, the girl from Delhi saying, my mom took me to the gynecologist today and we're starting the procedure soon. Thank you for giving me strength and saving me. Love, the pregnant girl from Delhi. So, I couldn't believe it back then, and I don't think I still fully believe it now. I still don't believe that social media could actually help save a life, right? I couldn't believe it if it wasn't for the power of empathy and self-awareness. Uh, but I definitely do not want to stand here today in front of all of you and say something that, um, that sounds like Snapchat is helping uh, people, is saving lives, right? Because there's a, there's a pink elephant, a very pink elephant in this room that we need to talk about, and that is mental health. Um, I, I have to acknowledge that I also receive suicidal thoughts, sometimes on a daily basis, and I have to acknowledge the fact that this specific conversation is much uh, is part of a larger conversation, which is mental illness in the age of social media. But I will also be the first one to acknowledge that Snapchat stories are not going to cure a mental illness. Um, and the only reason why these people feel that there is a connection that they could make through Snapchat is because talking to them, I realized that they've exhausted all of their possibilities around them, meaning that their friends or family members either don't know what to do with people that are suffering through a mental illness, people that are suffering maybe from this depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, um, and they've been greeted often with either judgment or dismissal, with either phrases, for example, like, get over it, or this is just a phase, it will pass, from people that actually don't understand how serious mental illnesses are. Uh, pretty much as serious as cancer. If not treated in time, they could kill you. And I just wish that mental health was taken as seriously as physical health. Um, but until then, we need to create these spaces where these conversations, these honest and vulnerable conversations happen. So what does this, this, does this all mean? And why um, am I here today? I think that the whole point of what I'm doing with Snap Thoughts and with Snapchat is something that I actually did not reveal to my community until last month. And that is the fact that this Snap Thought project 
is really a collective cathartic exercise in meditation. And let me explain. When I ask people what they're doing, when they're doing it, and the location that they're doing it in, or what they're thinking in that particular moment, I'm asking for three things. I'm asking for not only their thoughts, which generates this level of self-awareness where you begin to think that you're actually a being who thinks and that those thoughts have a great impact on the way that you leave, uh, lead your life. But I'm also asking for location, which is making people self-aware of the social cultural context right, in which they live. And those contexts have a tremendous impact as well in our thoughts and the way we uh, lead our lives. And third of all, I'm asking people to be aware of the time, of the current present moment, of the now, which accounts for all of the lived experience up until this point. So the now also uh, reminds ourselves that this is the only time that we ever have, and our stories are the only things that we could ever truly share, truly own, and the only things that we'll ever leave behind. So what this means to me, what this whole Snap, uh, Snap Thoughts project means and what the Artidote means to me is, is a very simple reminder. And that's the reminder that for millennia, we've been doing the same thing. We've been bonding over stories. Like our stories are very important. I mean, back then, we were surrounded by cave walls. Now we're here surrounded by Facebook walls, Snapchat walls, but we're still sharing our stories and we're empathizing with each other through our stories, we're creating bonds and we're healing through the power of our own stories. Now, um, I think that more important than anything though is another, another reminder. And that's the reminder that here today, everybody, even though we're mostly strangers to each other, that we're at least in, uh, we're all in this together. Thank you.